Okay, okay, good. So, uh, hi, uh, so welcome back to 3.4 uh, for Linear Algebra 13 1203, yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, so uh, the sections are pretty straightforward. We just have to deal with a couple of equations that, and then we're going to use that as a bedrock a foundation uh, to solve all other questions, right? So, relatively easy, unlike 3.3 where we have to actually go through a lot of uh, formulas, but this one won't be too bad. So, the only thing you have to really worry about is these two equations for our questions, right? And the, for the whole section, there's another equation that's useful, but nonetheless. So, we are given with these two. So, let's explain what they mean. X is some kind of a vector, right? Uh, yeah, so, uh, or plane, uh, but we'll get to that. So, for now, just think of this X as a uh, um, just a uh, happen just another vector and then x0 happens to be just a point that the vector is uh, intercepting so for example if this is a vector and then so the point is anywhere on here right so it could be here it could be here it could be here as long as it's a point that's all we care about right and then basically uh, if we add it by TV where V is the another uh, is a is another vector uh, and then T is the um, um, Basically, it is a parameter. So if you remember uh, the, the times when we had to eliminate, eliminate a ma uh, and simplify the matrix like there was no tomorrow, um, remember uh, we had to find out the solution. So let's say from x1 to x5, right? So that's probably a matrix, uh, has a matrix dimension of 5, five by 5. And then uh, we have to look, solve for every single uh, unknown variables. And quite often what happens, especially since, mo you know, if you have five variables, chances are you're going to have infinite solutions, right? It may not, right? But nonetheless. So in those cases, usually one of the variables, like let's say x5 or x1, depending on which direction you did first, they're going to be just any number, right? So, which is the whole point of having an infinite solution. So instead of using x5 to solve other things, we, for some reason, we use the parameters. Uh, so instead of saying x5, we use p, or if you've been following my video, I use my, uh, micro or u, but really it doesn't matter, right? So think of t as a parameter. So um, that was, uh, you know, for people who are not sure what this means, yeah, that's essentially that's what it is. Because we're, ha we're using this vector to describe another vector, which is what we did with elimination, right? We use x5, right, some as trivia, uh, some solution. Uh, to explain another solution. So that's why we want to use parameter. Ultimately, does it make matter? No, but you know, that's the idea, right? And we already talked about why we use parameters in the past. So check it out, but you know, just to you know, make sure you survive the uh, course, that's not really necessary. We may deal with that in discrete, maybe. No promises though. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's gonna be fun times. Uh, for those who don't know Carlos, um, yeah, um, yeah, it'll be very exciting. Uh, I, Put it that way. But anyways, so you have these two equations. So um, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. And ultimately, what this equation really means is we have a given vector or something, right? I'm gonna find another vector that is parallel, right? But why do we need to bother? We already know, learned how to do that. That happens to pass through that x uh, x zero point, right? So there are a lot of possibilities. It could be this. It could be this. It could be this. It could be whatever, right? It could it could even be the same thing. Right? But it's very special because it touches that specific point. So if the point was over here, like for example right here, right? Then that vector is going to be touching right there, which happens to parallel this guy, right? Uh, I have a horrible reflex coordination, but nonetheless, you get the idea. So that's really what we're doing uh, for uh, from question 1 to question 8, essentially, right? So, um, let's, so I actually did a few myself. But uh, yeah, so once we understand the concept, we can move forward. Oh, by the way, um, here is this x is a plane that can be. It's just that for specific cases, for this specific case, we only have one vector, right? So we have one vector, and then you have another vector. So and which, so that new vector is where this touches this point, right? So if we do that, and then basically in this case. Think of it as a plane, but because it's only two, one vector, uh, so that plane happens to be just a line. When we do this equation, however, because there's multiple vectors, so you're going to have this vector and this vector, right? So then our x will be representing a plane, but we'll, we'll get to that later, right? So for now, let's look at question one, right? So you 
there's a point there and there's a vector, right? So, you know, we have this equation, so I just fill it in. Uh, we're looking for the new vector that is parallel to this, but also intercepting this point as well. So, interesting lab. This is sort of looks familiar, right? X final minus X initial. That's how we calculated the equ linear equation, right? So, hint, hint, right? But anyways, so you just fill it in, you know, it's not that difficult. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm assuming we all know how to do algebra. So at this point, so negative 4, 1 minus 8t, you know, because we're just you know, adding these two uh, vector comp uh, components. And then that's got, so the first one is representing x, and the second one is representing y. So, yeah, so that's that. And the uh, book doesn't say this, but I just do it because it's a habit. t can be any real numbers, but really doesn't matter. This is what we're looking for, right? So if you look at number 3, uh, again, same thing, but, you know, it's uh, three-dimensional because we have x, y, z, right? So, you know, that's that. Now, interesting enough, this is origin, and this will may become useful depending on what questions we have because the origin goes through 0, 0, 0, right? So ultimately, when we add, we're not really adding any, anything. So on the solution manual, they just look, they just uh, pick point, uh, point at these, uh, these uh, vector components, right? And just say, this is x, this is y, this is z, which is fine, only because origin is 0. But not necessarily the case, right? So if I add it here, just, you know, so that I can show you how it should be done, generally speaking, you have these, so that's x, y, z, right? So don't be fooled, just because on the solution it says, oh, the vector is says that, that's good enough. No, it's not. Because if you look at number four, we are on, our, we're not intercepting uh, the origin, right? So we're going to have different x, y, and z, right? So just follow these through, and then you should be all good to go. Uh, and then we'll start question five. Same idea, but uh, you know we're gonna actually go in reverse. So, all right. So question for question five, um, we're essentially doing the same thing, but in reverse. So from question one to four, we were finding out uh, the point, uh, the point, and uh, sorry, we were given point and the uh, vector, and then we have to find another parallel vector that intercepts that point. Right. This time it's different. This time we will find we already have the new uh, the vector that intercepts that point. Now we have to find what that point is and the original uh, vector that parallels to the uh, vector that intercepts that point. So yeah, there uh, it's confusing, but basically it's doing reverse of what we've done before. So, anyways, so question five. Um, so this is uh, the vector that we were finding out in the earlier question, right? So this is the new vector, and we want to find the old vector and the point that new vector intercepts, not the old one, right? So uh, this one is just mostly like just common sense, but uh, I'll, you know, I'll go through it. So basically, remember the equ general equation was this, right? So because of that, um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so because of that, um, you, you can sort of tell that, that this vector is associated with this uh, parameter t, right? So anything that has t is probably the guy who's involved with the vector, right? So 3 and negative 6. They have no t as a t uh, parameter attached to it. So chances are these two, that's 3 and negative 6, is going to have some correlation with the point rather than the vector. So because that 3 and negative 6 goes here, and then the negative 5 and negative t is going to go over here. I put the sign consistently, so if this is negative, this is negative, this is negative, then this is negative, because it's always plus t, right? So if you have a negative, that means you must have a negative number. So, you know, that's what I have, and it just so happens that based on this format, this x0 is, happens to be the point, and this happens to be the vector. And if you actually multiply them together, you should get the exact same answer as the question that was given, okay? So, that is that. Um, the other, uh, and number six is essentially the same thing. Don't be intimidated by the fact that it has x, y, z. The same thing as just a new vector, right? The vector x, right? Actually, since we're talking vector, we should put lines through it, but nonetheless. Okay, so, uh, uh, we will not put lines for this one though, right? Just, uh, just to be 100% clear. This is a point. Point is not a vector, so it, yeah, you guys get the idea. So, uh, yeah, so um, so again, so this is the same thing as that new vector. It has x and y, z, x, y, and z coordinates. And that happens to equal to that. So again, we do the same concept that we were doing before. For t, t has something to do with the parameter, which means it's a vector. 
So 4 goes to the vector over here, right? 7, no parameter, so that must be the point, right? And then 3t, yeah, it has parameter, so it must be something to do with this. Rest of them should be 0. For example, is 4, is, isn't 4t the same thing as 4t plus 0, right? So that's where 0 goes here, right? So if you have just a t, that means the, the other point must be 0, right? Which makes sense, right? Because if you have 0 plus 4t, then 0 must be the point, and 4t, which since it has a parameter, must go to the vector, right? So that's sort of what I did, right? So 4 goes here, no number, so that's 0. 7, that's a number over here, and no parameter though, so that must be 0. Uh, 3t is a parameter, so 3 goes here, no number, that should be 0. Oh, no, 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 what am I saying? Sorry, my bad. What I meant was, yeah, what am I saying? 4 plus 3t, so 3t, so 3 has a parameter, so it goes to the vector. 4 is a point, so that's got, uh, is a number, so it's going to go to the point. So basically, that's what you're going to have. It looks a little weird, I just like this way, because they have x, y, and z, but this is essentially the same thing as this. But I wrote it in a column format. I think our professor prefer column, because they're visually more appeasing, uh, pleasing, and uh, uh, when we do, when we try to uh, do matrix calculations, this looks better than this one. But, you know, ultimately same thing, right? So, number seven. So this is another thing that I don't think you necessarily need, but it's good to know, I guess, I suppose. So, uh, on, if you did your reading, not only that this, so we already talked about the first equation, but there's, but this is also equivalent to the second and third equation. So, it, I mean, I, it's nice if you can recognize it, but ultimately it doesn't matter because all it's saying is all the multiplication should give you x, right? And I don't think our class is tricky enough to the point where they give you the wrong format. So, you know, it leads into a, you know, wrong answer, wrong x. And then when we try to separate the x into point and the vector component, we mess it up. But I don't think that's going to happen. But nonetheless. So let's go through number seven. So number seven, we have a really bizarre format. But again, if you look at, if you're familiar with this formula, this matches this perfectly, right? Because one minus t, yeah, I say one minus t x zero, so that ha that must uh, be the point, and then plus t, and then x one is going to be just another vector. So um, yeah, so essentially that. So basically, I was so um, yeah. So using this format, I just times a one minus t with the point, which gives me this, right? One. So remember, this is like uh, multiplying uh, this. This is like uh, multiplying the fact uh, factor of uh, equations, right? So because of that, 1 minus t times 4. So that's the first entry. Second entry is going to also have 1 minus t times 6. Yeah, okay. So that's that. Um, wait, did I do this right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, uh, okay, maybe I could have wrote this a little better t times as uh, 1, right, yeah, uh -huh. so the question says, uh, 4, 6, so that's got to be 6, okay, because 4 and the 6 represents a point, right, so, anyways, so we have, so, we just, we're just, I, we're just multiplying 1 minus t with the point, right? So you have that, plus uh, t x1, which still stays the same because negative 2 and 0 are the uh, vectors, right? So we do that, then we mash, bash this together, so we have this and this, and then simplify further, and this should give me, give me this, which equals to that x, right? All these equals to x, so this is the x, right? So once we have that, then, you know, rest is simple. It's just like what we did with 5 and 6, right? Now we pull them apart, so obviously this is two-dimensional, so because, you know, it's got x and y, so uh, let's look at it here, so we're going to split this into this format, so point, and that, so first equation again, right? So this equals to this, so once I find out all this, that should be the same thing as our original equation, so the point is going to be, let's see, number, number, right? So 4 and 1. Hey, parameter, parameter, so that must be the vector. So I just separate it that way. 4, 1, and then negative 6, negative 6. If you multiply these together, you should get exactly the same thing as that, right? 
we already know from this format that this must be the point, this must be the vector. So that's all there is, right? So uh, let's look at number eight. It's essentially the same idea. Uh, we have a, you know, three, uh, we have a vector that's uh, three dimensional, big deal. It's the same thing. So same process. So uh, I'm gonna times this uh, together. Zero times anything is zero, so I just put zero here. Negative five times that is going to give me that. One times that will give me just the same thing. So once I have found the over a new vector x, right? Uh, nah. uh, that. So once I have that, then I can uh, pull this apart so that I can put it into this format. So again, zero is a point uh, number, so it's gonna be a point. Uh, is it a parameter? No, so the parameter is gonna be zero. Negative five plus five t. Negative five is a number, so it goes to the point. 5t, that has a parameter, so 5 goes to the vector, uh, 1 minus t, 1 is a number, so it goes to the point, and negative t is the uh, parameter, so it goes to the vector, negative 1. So, so not too hard at all, right? So uh, that's uh, up to A, now we're going to look for question 9. Okay, great, so now we're going to be working on uh, question 9 and 10. 11 and 12 is essentially the same thing, so I actually recommend you to skip it if you can do if you can do nine and ter ten, or you know you could be paranoid like me and just end up doing all of them. But either way, up to you. So, anyways, I for this video's purposes, I just did nine and ten, so that should be good enough. But not this. So here, uh, what we're doing is now we're gonna be using this equation, right? So this now interestingly though, right? Because remember we said this used to be a vector, right? This time we're looking for yeah, actually no. It's still a vector. Ah, what am I saying? It just, it looks like a plane, but it's really, I don't know how to say, three-dimensional vector? <laughs> okay, but let's solve it first, and then hopefully I can go further in detail as to what I mean. So, uh, so we are using this equation, and then basically they give us a point in two vectors. So x0 is going to be the, uh, that's going to be the point that in, that this uh, vector uh, intercept. So it's going to be negative 3, 1, 0. Just copy and paste, essentially. And v1, copy and paste, v2, copy and paste. And then, so basically, this is a vector equation, right? So the second part is, what is a parametric equation? So this is what we have to do. So, because once we bash them together, we're going to have this thing, right? We, which we talked about, right? x, y, z, this should be nothing new, right? So because of that, this is going to represent x, this is going to represent y, this is going to represent z. So I just put in this format, really up to you. Or you could just say this, 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 either way, right? Again, t1 and t2 is a, can be any real number. This is a parametric equation, which may, should make sense, right? Because it's got parameters on it, right? So, um, yeah, so that's essentially that. And, uh, oh, yeah, and another thing, um, this new vector, right? Right, this uh, new vector, right? So that is going to be parallel to these two vectors. So remember that, right? So, and what, it, yeah, so that's said. Number 10, same thing, you do the same drill, and so this new vector is going to be parallel to this guy as well as this guy, okay? Now, um, okay, so that's that, and um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's it, and then uh, for 13 and 14, we're going to do a little different twist rather than finding a vector that's parallel to the given uh, vectors, we're going to be looking for one that is orthogonal. So that's question 13 and 14. Okay, so this is question 13 and 14. So basically we're doing the same thing as we've been doing in the past, but rather than looking for something that's uh, parallel, we will be looking for something that's orthogonal. And we'll find out how we do that. So, you know, we are given with this vector that goes through the origin, which is just... So you could just write, I guess, point is 0 and 0. So, you know, again, set up the equation as follows, and then you have 0 and 0 and negative 2t and negative 3t. So, this is my new uh, vector. So if you see the graph here, so this thing, the first line, right? So that's going to be my v1, uh, original vector. And that's going to be my new vector where it intercepts the origin, right? So this line is what we're looking for. So how do we find this line? Well, if we know this line, orthogonal to, and if there's another orthogonal to that one, this times this should give me zero. Yeah, that's that. That was a product. That was a condition uh, requirement for the orthogonal relationship, right? If you have two vectors and they, if you do a dot product of each, they must give zero. Then that way we know it's orthogonal for sure. 
So, uh, if you remember this question, this will be useful uh, from 3.3. Uh, if you have A and B, uh, the orthogonal uh, counterpart is going to be negative BA or B and negative A, right? So, um, so these two are the same thing, but they're just going in the opposite, uh, opposite direction, right? Because I just times both sides by negative. So, um, so if I have, so I just express it this way, your uh, solution doesn't, but this seems to make awful lot of sense to me to distinguish between this guy and this guy. So, you know, I do that and then I'm just gonna, uh, I just switched, right? So you have two, three, so I'm gonna switch that and then, so like that. And then uh, I change the sign for B, just like what I have done here. So it's gonna be uh, negative three and negative two, or it's gonna be three and two. So this is parametric equation, right? So if you want just the vector itself, then you know separate the parameter out, and then this will be your vector, right? Perpendicular, right? So either use this or this, doesn't really matter, right? Um, so the question 14 does the same thing, right? So now that we've established this, we can even skip steps. Actually, no, don't do that. Uh, maybe. On the solution manner, they don't really talk about the steps, so. But, uh, you know, it's the same concept with this, right? So it's gonna be, have, it, the new vector's gonna have that. So you just flip it and then change the, one of the uh, uh, positive and negative signs. So negative four will come here, and then negative four become four. So, and then the other one stays the same, so it's gonna be that. Or this. So, notice that I did negative on both sides, so that just means it's going the opposite direction. Yeah, so that's there is. So it's just, uh, there, was, there, uh, there all is to it. And then, then this new vector perpendicular, because it's perpendicular to the new vector, it's going to be perpendicular to the old vector too. Because these two parallel. So if this new guy is perpendicular to this guy, it will be perpendicular to this guy as well. So that's all there is. Uh, 15 and 16 is essentially the same thing, but we ju we're just playing with two vectors. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is uh, question 15. So we're doing essentially the same thing, but we need require two vectors rather than just uh, one. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So question saying, find a general, so question saying, find vector and param uh, parametric equation of the plane in R3 that passes through the origin and is orthogonal to V. So, the reason why we're looking for two vector is this time they're not asking uh, find the vector and parametric equation for the plane, right? Not line, right? So in order to have a plane, right? So for example, here you can see here. So if it's a line, great. I just need one vector. But if I want plane, I need it's two dimension, right? So I need two vectors minimum. So that's why we we're, we're trying to find two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, which makes total sense, right? Because, yeah, because, you know, they're perpendicular, but nonetheless. So because of that, so, and it goes to the origin, which is all a good deal. So we need to find two vectors that we can use, right? So, you know, orthogonal definition is, if you do a dot product of those two vectors and it equals to zero, then we know it's, ortho, uh, we know it's orthogonal, right? So I have this expression here, and then, you know, so this is what, so I understand this is now three-dimensional, so you can use the same A, B, B, A relationship that we were using before, but it's the same idea, because ultimately we just want both to be zero when you do a dot product of them, right? So because of that, you know, I just want, so here's four, zero, and negative five, right? So, you know, I just want to make sure they add up to zero, so rest is simple math. Uh, if I put zero here, that four times zero will be zero, uh, if I put 5 here, 5 times 0 will be 0, and then 0 times negative 5 is going to be 0. So 0, 0, 0, all 0. So to me, that's efficient and fast way to get go around things. Do not do 0, 0, 0, however. I mean, that works beautifully if you just want to get a 0, right? But I think that requirement is that when you do a dot product, they must be like non-zero vector, right? So make sure it's not 0, 0, 0. Don't use that, right? So, uh, the other one, I had to be a little bit more, well, again, I can't use the same thing, obviously, so I just found different ways to make it zero, so if I did, hey, that's four and negative five, so can I make it 20 and negative 20? That's my guess, right? So, I did four times five, that would be 20. Zero, we don't care, I just times it by zero so that I can forget about it, and if I do, this is negative five, so hey, what if I do four? Sort of like A, B, and uh, B, A relationship we were talking about, right? 
which we can actually use because the middle we can just totally discount it, right? So if that's the case, 20, they get 20, that gives me zero. So cool, five, zero, four, that's what I'm gonna use. These two are this orthogonal and these two are orthogonal. So I'm gonna use these two to create a new uh, plane equation, right? So again, remember, oh, uh, so if that's the case, then it's plane, so we don't use the x. So that's what you have to kind of think through, right? So remember, I gave you this equation and the one equation before that, and I said one is a plane. This is a plane because you have two vectors going through, and then you make a plane. And as we all know, plane is not a vector. So, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna set up the equation like this. It goes to the origin, which is nice. So then you know, just plug it in, and then because there's a lot of zeros, a lot of things will just cancel itself out. But ultimately, I get these, right? So this will be the parametric uh, equation because it has parameters, right? And 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 so forth. Um, so yeah, find the yeah. Okay. So that's essentially all there is. Nope. Can I knock it that? Knock it over? No, we didn't. Okay. And um, oops. Yeah. Sorry, I knocked it over a little. But yeah. So essentially, this is going to be the parametric equation, and this so. Uh, yeah, so this will be the vector, and this will be the parametric, right? So you can write it this way, or if you, but ultimately it really, oh no, you can't do five. I suppose you could do this, hmm, let's see. Yeah, no, no, we want to put it this way, yeah. Uh, this is a simplified version. Technically, I suppose what you could do is put it in this format, right? Because they're both vectors, because I can see the vector points. But yeah, ultimately, it really doesn't matter. But basically, they want this and they want that. So that's all there is to it. Uh, I'll do 16 just you know, for people who are not comfortable with this yet. But again, it's pretty straightforward. So let me flash the question 16 for you. Okay, so this is uh, question 11. So, oh, uh, sorry, 16. So, you know, take a peek, quick peek if you'd like, but ultimately it's the same deal, right? So, you know, got the, these two that they're looking for. So that's all there is. So again, nothing too hard. We're gonna do a cross product, which, uh, you know, it's just like Kramer's rule. Once you have the rule, then, you know, you're pretty much all set. So, uh, I'll see you again in uh, 3.5.